Oh, well, it is what it is. Oh, uh, it is what it is. What's up, y'all? Oh, yes, we are. Hold on. I almost forgot. I want to actually get the... I want to see the live chat. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Perfect. What's up, one and all? Welcome to episode 101 of Peace Talk. You already know what it is. We starting in the next digits off quite well. Actually, let's just do this. Um, yeah, I'm switching it up this time. I got uh, the homie, the brother, the, the super <laughs> homie squad for sure. member. I can't even say member, the grand, the grand member right here. Oh, <laughs> uh, David Palma in the building. Um, yeah, when I say switching it up, though, I don't I think this is the first peace talk I've ever done where I'm like with somebody like next to them, you know, uh -huh. as opposed to just being, um, you know, online or, or doing um a hangout. Wait till you see. Wait, wait till we go over his zodiac sign. Y'all gonna trip. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> how y'all doing? Shout out to those of you showing love in the live chat. Shout out to Bella. Shout out to Sun Soul Studio. Shout out to Sun Soul <laughs> Studio. It's got laced with a new shirt. Yep. And then you see Phil right here. Pippin' our matrix over here. We've got integrity. Saturn retrograde and uh, Gemini as always. Shout out to Unicorn Tears. Uh, yeah, so um this is this is really this is cool because a lot of it was impromptu i think you guys saw 101 was gonna go to gem goddess but uh we had to reschedule that um give her some positive energy she's she has a little bit of a throat issue but other than that you know totally totally grateful to see you here man uh, there you are. yeah i i know you said you're coming to the town but um I didn't expect you to come this soon, so that's that's really was good. Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I'm not supposed to be here right now, but I'm supposed to be here because I'm here. There you go. You know, that's I wasn't supposed to though. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, man. As far as guests go, this dude's a pretty huge deal. Um, if you don't know of him, you probably will soon. So, you know, some of you are seeing him here first. And that's what it is. Uh, he was live with Maru yesterday. So if you haven't seen that live, definitely check it out. Very, very positive. But lots of good secrets in there. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Drop some good knowledge in there. How how you doing, man? I'm great, man. I'm so thankful to just be here, be with you, be with Maru, and just living life, man. Word. Living life. Y'all are so cool. I love hanging out with y'all. I'm not gonna lie, like one thing that sticks out to me about you is your aura, your vibration. Um, even when I first met you, like after like the morning after you 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 were like, stretching, I literally see like light beams emanating, just wow. like, you know, radiating this org presence, which uh, <laughs> is pretty pretty dope. Definitely had me uh want to take more serious my okay, well, I want a cologne like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh but yeah um how well how was your drive down here uh from la or from yeah. chicago from, from la yeah uh well that's a funny story i was like <laughs> totally didn't plan to come that night it was like i think it was saturday night or sunday night and i was like midnight and i called Maru. i was like yo i'm uh what are you doing she's like just chilling i was like i'm gonna come through she's like word let's go I was like, well, I'll be there in four hours because <laughs> I was supposed to stay with a friend in, in mm. L.A. And that all fell through. Long story short, I'm gypsying around the world right now. I'll be in Hawaii next at the end of the month. But That's dope. Um, yeah, so I just called Maru. She's like, yeah, come come stay over here. So I was half asleep and <laughs> like talking to her the whole way, like trying to stay awake. Like I don't need and then eventually I just got here somehow. So thankfully i'm here <laughs> that's what i love about maru maru can keep you entertained for hours like, oh for sure she, and the stuff she says is a fluff like it's gonna be like intense downloads that you go get for what she says oh it's great all the time but yeah one thing that i de that definitely uh caught my attention is your accent and you're from chicago yeah that's dope 
I didn't know we had an accent, but I guess most people don't. <laughs> just, uh, I didn't know I had one too. So I feel you on that. Uh, it wasn't until I got to LA that I found out that I have an accent. So yeah. recently, yeah, they're like, "Yeah, I can tell you were from Chicago." I was like, "Oh, okay. they're like your A's." I was like, "Oh, your Chicago." A's. Yeah. Shout out to Rachel, a um, friend from Detroit. That was the only other time I heard um, that that type of a. Uh, so, so I don't even know the word, but you were born and raised there, right? Yeah, born and raised in Chicago. Okay. Um, the Windy City, I hear a lot of great things about it. So um, what's your favorite part about Chicago? Um, well, it's not the cold weather because I'm over here. <laughs> I was I was born, I was in the city. I wasn't in the city too long. I was only there until I was five. And then I moved to like the suburbs area my whole life. So I kind of enjoyed the suburbs. Which I'm glad I moved away from the city because it's fucking wild out there. Um, not necessarily in a bad way. There's lots to do and it's beautiful and there's lots of not so beautiful things, but yeah, it's cool. What I like about Chicago though is the people are like pretty straightforward. Mm. Like, and that's why I guess uh, that's where I maybe developed it. From. Like, I'm pretty just direct. Like, there's no mm. real bullshit. <laughs> and like, we're just like very direct versus like when I got to like LA, I was just like, this is very indirect. And like I read that shit, so I'm just looking at people like, "What do you really mean, man?" Just like, like tell passive me. aggressive. Like, no, it's just like one way, but they mean something else. Yeah, That's like there's just like masks, oh, and layers, yeah. just masks, and like they don't even know they have masks on. It's wild. Damn. Um, and I'm not that this not that in Chicago is that all over the world, but yeah. I don't know. Chicago for me, it's just very. I've noticed. I never didn't notice until I left. Was it's just like direct. These people like this is what it is. It is, and we're doing yeah. it. And he's yeah. close like that too a bit, but yeah, they're wild out there too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, based on the, there's a lot of news about like shootings in Chicago, but it was nice to know that majority of it isn't like like there's there's different. You said there's good, there's bad. You know? Yeah, it's not like people call it Chirac and shit. It's yeah. really not like that. Like okay, yeah. So it's, oh, I mean, if you go to the south side, I guess it could be like that, but right, like. Yeah. You, you <laughs> don't ride to the south side. Like you hang out downtown or hang out like in the north side or whatever, and you're cool. True that. Um, there's just certain areas, just like in any place, you know, there's areas like downtown just, Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel you, you just avoid it, and you're cool for the most part, you know. Cool. Well, you did. You did mention driving from Chicago. So what was that trip like? Oh, that was beautiful. I recommend if you ever want to take a trip, drive to Chicago. Because oh, cool. passing Colorado, I mean, Nebraska and like Iowa are kind of just flat and not so cool. But Denver, going through the mountains, seeing all the snow and going at night too and seeing the stars just lit up. And then going through Utah and seeing all that, even though it's like all dead. Um, but just seeing like all the like canyons type of thing. Um, a little bit of Arizona. It's a beautiful drive. Beautiful, beautiful drive. Highly recommend it. Yes, yes, yes. And there's a lot of like natural parks too that you could go and visit. I didn't. I just kind of stopped and pulled over inside the road. But um, yeah, it's a fun drive. Super fun. I need to. I need to hit it up. I still need to get my traveling on. There's yeah, I want to stop in Denver, but I don't know anybody really in Denver to like go do some work or some <laughs> workshops. That's what's up. Bless you. Um, yeah, I mean. Um, you're definitely the, the way uh we met you had hit me up you invited me to come through to one of your workshops um and really how do i even say like get to know a very amazing medicine mm. um and yeah i'm so glad you know i i opened up and did uh i got to meet a very genuine individual for for those who and, and other people too um, but for those who aren't aware, what is, what's your sun and moon and rising sign? Yo, what's my sun, moon, and rising sign, Maru? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sun Capricorn. I think I'm Aquarius moon and an Aries rising. Yeah, man, I know for sure. Definitely aqua moon and uh, something like that. Capricorn know. sun. So it's a, it's a huge deal. It's the, the director right here. Shout out to you, aqua moons. Um, and he's born, you're born 91, 91. Right? Yeah. So he has, you got Saturn on your son, you have Uranus, Neptune, the North Node. It's a very powerful man, y'all. It's all types of wild stuff, apparently, on my... Oh, yeah. Especially as an aqua moon, which is uh, pretty cool. I, 
uh, super. It, it, it's dope because uh, Maru, uh, Justin, and I were able to, you know, connect all together because of, you know, you, because of uh, an invite with with you. So, you know, I think it's really dope that we all got to connect um, and get to know each other more. But beautiful. Yeah. Um, other than that, how do you how do you feel about being a Capricorn? I'm just myself, man. I never identify too hard with anything. I just live my life. But I, <laughs> <She's> just, <yeah. laughs> I am pretty, uh, pretty. Cap- I was pretty Capricorn ish if you will, when I was younger. And I still very direct. Yeah. I work. I get shit done. I don't like fucking around. But other than that, I'm okay with it. Goats are fucking crazy, man. They just chill on the side of mountains like nothing's happening. And and you want you in a unicorn decan. So I mean it's the same to say it's a real unicorn, y'all. If if you're a unicorn. <laughs> Where's my horn? Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. You you see it with the spiritual realm, right? You probably yeah. uh, he's flying around. But um <laughs> Aquamoon answered little no labels, I feel you. Um yeah. It's it's really I'm really honored to have you here because you're definitely involved in something that is totally beneficial, totally necessary, but not the most understood. Absolutely. So, you know, you were talking about you're you're out here and you're gonna do a workshop in Hawaii. Could you like open up more about what you do? Yeah, so I um I do a level of different things. My main focus in my work is um I have a healing center in Peru. I work with plant medicine, specifically ayahuasca and the Shipibo tribe out there. I have a healing center and we hold retreats, we hold initiation courses, we kind of um down there it's wild. They heal like AIDS, cancer, diabetes, like it's a full on healing center. It's not just an ayahuasca healing center. Um, so overall my that supports my mission to really like help the world and, and connect, help my biggest mission is really to like help people free themselves from their minds. Mm-hmm. There's all these matrices, there's all these like programs and heavy bullshit that's like put on people's minds from passed on from generation or just from like the food and information that we're given from yeah. TV and all that stuff. So I want to break every whether that's through ayahuasca, whether that's through I teach meditation, I lifestyle coach. So I help people create like the lifestyle that they want. Like I always say, like you have this character. I have a character, David, right? And this character, it's like just like Maria was like, how can I pimp his matrix? How can I make his life like dope? It's like a game of Sims. Like how? What oh, kind of cool like? Okay. Yeah. It's like a video game, literally. Like what kind of cool weapons can I give him? What kind of cool like decked out like attire can I give? Him? What kind of experience can I give David? You know. And at the same time, what kind of service can I have David offer to other people? And so I lifestyle coach and then I personal train as well. In Hawaii, I'm going to be holding um, a couple different um, ceremonies. Um, there, I'll be there for two weeks. I'm going to have a retreat um, the 27th, 28th, and 29th, the last weekend of April. And then I'll kind of just be freelancing through the islands um, for the following week. And I'm just doing different plant medicine ceremonies and yeah, just meeting new people, unlocking unlocking that part of the world. That's dope. I mean, you you very you did say like they cure AIDS, cancer. Um, you know, people people are so skeptical of that. Even yeah. even I mean, they, Dr. Sebi came up again in uh, people's conversations, and it, people are so quick to call him a quack and a fraud uh, when mm-hmm. you know he has apparently cured that through. Uh, unorthodox medicines uh exactly. like, like they do down there but they're so quick to like discredit the hard work y'all do as if it's not real which i mean could go into a whole nother conversation yeah. so you know i just those are usually <laughs> the people who need the medicine the most <laughs> yeah. the people who are stuck believing like no it's my doctor said this or i only believe in this like what do you have to lose you know yeah. i've seen it with my own eyes these different miracles these different healings these different things that's happened so whether somebody believes it or not, I don't care. You know, now if you want to go and experience that yourself, if you want to go, if you, if you're going through some type of experience of an, of an illness and you want to go and heal that in an unconventional way, it's very possible. Cause what people don't understand that speak like that is these illnesses are not just, um, coming from food, from a physical state, they're coming from an energetic state, from a spiritual state. And sometimes people literally have like demons and like 
heavy energies following them or like literally controlling them. Like when I see it, it's like, like puppets, there's strings and they just control them. So like, that's what manifests eventually into a physical illness. And sometimes your medical doctor is not going to know what most of the time they're going to have no idea. They don't see that stuff. So when you go to the shamans in the Amazon, they see what's going on and they fight off those, help you get rid of those energies and clear you energetically so that no longer have that, that demon or that whatever you want to call it, that heavy energy attached to you or attached to your soul, attached to your being. So no, now the manifestation of that illness dissipates. I was, I was going to mention too, like you, um, you, you focus more on the spiritual element instead of just a physical. Yeah. It's physical as well. Like when I say the heal, you know, AIDS and cancer, all this stuff, it's not like, it's not like here, take the red pill, take the blue pill. You're yeah. good. Like yeah. it's a very much the plants They use plant medicine. They use plants in the consciousness of plants, but it's a very manual way of doing things. And you gotta be strong. Yeah. Because. You have to decide you want to heal. If yes. you haven't decided, it won't work. The plants help you, but you have to ultimately push you. Because some of these things that, you know, the heal aids, one of the medicines you have to take is a purgative that makes you puke and shit yourself or not yourself, but like you're on the toilet and you're puking for four hours and you have to chug like 10 gallons of water because you literally take some poison to kill all the virus, yeah. but you have to drink water to throw that all up. Damn. So like, it's not like a walk in the park, like, hey, let me just go hang out in the jungle and all of a sudden I'm going to heal my illness. Like, no, if you got some serious stuff, it's going to take some serious medicine. You know, I'm not going to lie. The last ceremony I did, it literally felt like I was getting exercised. <laughs> I didn't think I, I even had like um, any energy like that within me, but I was wrong. <laughs> it was, but it, it, it didn't feel scary. Um, it, it really felt like cleansing. Yeah. So definitely grateful. Yeah, a lot of people are, are fear it. They're like, well, what if I something comes up or you're like, it's not what if something comes up, it's already there and it's manifesting in your everyday life. So just because you don't face it in your everyday life, it just slowly manifests in these little parts. And that's why you're in these situations. You're like, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity when you're working specifically with ayahuasca or, or plant medicine similar to that. It's your opportunity to really face that and really like um, release that, you know, and, and after it could be scary during the ceremony, but that's what the shaman is there for singing, helping you process it and really release that purge it out. And then it's like a weight off your shoulders. It's like a weight off your, you know, the liberating feeling, you know, you, you know, you felt it. Um, and you just feel like clarity. You feel like, boom, like you're no longer drowning in this mucky mud. You're now in like this clear water. Oh, definitely. Uh, especially clear. It definitely does release what doesn't serve you. But it's just, just like you said, it's all about your intent. Like you have to really, yeah. really want it. You have to, it's not, it's not like a magical pill that's just going to change no. your whole life. Like if you don't, if you have you to don't be wanna, prepared. Yeah. Absolutely. No, oh, definitely. So I'm going to say this when we end, but I, I'm going to say this again now. Uh, hit this dude up, man. Like, um, I, I put the website in the description, but he has an Instagram that I'll put also there shortly. Energy is truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk to this man. He's not Hollywood. He's not going to, like, act too cool to reach out. Lots of knowledge. Um, he's a handstand sure, master, yeah. too. <laughs> I got called out yesterday. What? <laughs> called me out a handstand on the live. I was like, all right, cool. You had to do a handstand? She made me do a handstand on the live yesterday. No, I missed it. Damn. Oh, man. I was hoping you'd be down, too. But... Oh, right now? <laughs> yeah, if you want to. <laughs> mm, I mean, for calling me out, I guess. I <laughs> Get ready, y'all. This is real life. <laughs> Word. We good? We good? Back up. Oh, word. Yep. Word. And and I mean, don't be fooled. Like he could he could stay on his hands for like minutes. Oh, I was time. gonna do a push up, but then I went down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. Um, where we go? Yeah. So. You you're actually also like a calisthenics instructor, right? Like yeah, a personal train. The personal train I do is is very focused on like mind body. Like my workouts are meditations. It's not, you know, let me we'll try and lift five hundred pounds or like something like that. It's really focused on um, the energy of your body. Um, really working with the mind body connection. You know, in order to do a handstand, you have to activate these tiny little muscles in your obliques and your abs and your whole body in the proper way. So how do you do that? You unlock the neural pathways from your brain to tell it to activate. So it's very focused on proper body function and 
proper body function and um, the biomechanics of your body versus just like, oh, I want to get big or I want to be like, I'm very much about aestheticness and, and making everything function versus just being big and bulky. And you said neural pathways. To, yeah. I've never really, um, I'm not used to hearing that. So like you, you focus more on the mindset that someone has. Yeah. While they're in, doing that. in order to do like a handstand or any, any, if you're doing in calisthenics, there's a lot of like cool holds and stuff. You have to be able to visualize that first. And through that visualization, um, you actually send the electrical signals in your brain through your nervous network to be able to do that. And it just requires more practice and more practice and more practice. Um, cause calisthenics is like the superhuman workouts. So when you're doing people see, seeing people do like crazy handstand, one arm handstands, like front levers yeah, and like yeah. all this wild stuff. Um, and it requires like a lot of practice and a lot of, um, openness in your energy. A lot of, um, cause if you have, if you're not open, if you're not, not just flexible, but like able to send these electrical signals, cause what's your body? It's electricity, you know, and your brain produces electricity and sends that signals to your nervous system to be able to activate. It's like the information pathway, activate the muscle. So if you can't do that, if there's blockages on the road, if there's, you know, the road gets cut off, like through whatever that's emotions or your lack of flexibility or whatever level you want to look at it, um, then you can activate that. So my whole workout's based on not just working out and being functional, but just overall health of my mind, my body, my spirit, like all everything I do is really mind, body, spirit from meditation to ayahuasca to working out. Anything I do is always focused on the energy of my body and how can I be fucking awesome. <laughs> it's a great how can I level up? That's what's up. And um, you, that's really, that's really wild. Um, I'm still kind of caught when you said your body's electric because that's so true. The electrical impulses from your brain to your heart and then water. Yeah, it's beyond that, but that's like the whole neur neural yeah, looking, yeah, looking at it that way. Absolutely. Weird. Um, you, how, what's, um, I was literally about to take one question, like five different ways. So let's start with <laughs> your, what, what's your, what's your, oh, there we go. I was going to ask you, um, the, the, you, you, you definitely have a great balance. Like you, you work physically, you work mentally and spiritually. So the blockages is what the ceremonies you do can help release and the workshops you facilitate. Yeah. For sure. I don't know what kind of question that was, but. <laughs> that wasn't even a question, my bad. <laughs> oh, okay. But... <laughs> I was like, wait, how do I answer? Yeah. Um, um, so like if people have blockages, this is, this, workshops can release like maybe almost anything. Yeah, doing ceremonies, doing ceremonies. personal training. Like I look at it from a holistic point of view. Instead of just not just like, okay, you need this medicine. Not just like, yeah. like if I'm working with somebody, if I'm coaching somebody, it's going to be um one let's get your herbs right let's get your intake of fuel for your cells correct yeah and two <clears throat> let's get your physical performance because if you're just sitting your ass on your couch like how are how can you energy that doesn't move dies like things that are dying their energy starts starts slowing down it's slowing down so things you that are, gotta keep it moving for yeah, that reason. Okay. things that are bumping like their atoms are spinning super fast it's like live it's vibrating high so you have to move because if you just sit still like it's like if you get jet lag after long flight your energy has been so accustomed to being like this that it starts molding. So by movement, movement's literally life, like things that move our life. So movement is like my goal. And then also like working on emotional, energetic and like spiritual things that you may have going on um, to kind of give it that whole holistic um, healing versus just like, okay, go work out or take these pills and you're going to be okay. You know, I look at it from every single dimension that I'm aware of and address it that way. You're definitely one of the people that have motivated me to eat a healthier diet. And um, what would you say your diet consists of? Are you, are you not necessarily, are you plant-based or are you vegan? So uh, this is a good question. We oh, actually answered yesterday. I'm Gatortarian officially. I made that up. Ooh. So I've been vegetarian for, for about four years, um, basically vegan because I didn't eat any cheese. Um, I don't eat dairy. It's just too heavy for your liver and your kidneys. Um, but I was eating eggs. So that was the only thing separating me from veganism, if you will, mm -hmm. in the past four years. And this past trip in Peru at Mahilan Center, I did uh, a diet on um, the tree of life, which is this bioluminescent tree that grows at our center, um, which is a whole other story. And I was given the information that I no longer 
that I have to eat gator. I have to eat gator, but just twice a month. You, mean, you actually meant like gator gator. No, like alligator, yeah. I have to eat Holy alligator shit. twice a month, every two weeks. And it's like not a big piece. Like I don't eat like okay. a gator, like literally like a small little piece. Okay. That's what like the diets that I carry wow. within me, the energy, the plant spirits that I carry within me. Um, they gave me that message. And then my teacher confirmed it after. She's like, yeah, I'm going to tell you something you don't want to hear. You have to eat, you have to eat gator because she knew I was a vegetarian. I was like, okay, let's do it. The next day I was eating gator. Like I'm so, so you don't disattached. Eat meat, you just eat gator. I just eat gator twice a month. Wow. And it's just like a little piece. How does Other than that, taste? I'm, it tastes it taste like chicken. Yo, gator is delicious though. Oh, I was actually a year previous, I was a gator's pretty big in the jungle in the Quitos where my healing center is. And I was like, man, I craved it. It's like the plants were already telling me ahead of time, like, you need gator. I was like, man, in all those years I ate meat, I never ate gator. You know, I always wondered, what would that taste like? And then six months later, my plant tells me you need gator for the strength of the spirit of the animal as well as um, the meat to strengthen my body and strengthen my energy. So now I eat gator. A lot of people say like, oh, where are you going to get your protein from? Uh, No, I eat more protein than anybody that eats me in this chat, I promise you. So (laughs) there's so many. There's so so many sources for protein. And your body doesn't need as much protein as people think. It's more the amino acids that are the building blocks of protein versus like people thinking they need all this like garbage whey protein or stuff that really damages your body versus actually like building muscle. Um, So what's what's like a good sample diet, like especially for someone like me that's wanting to definitely transition? What's what's like if 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 someone was to go to the grocery store for like a week's worth of food, what would you recommend? They buy? Um, like overall, like somebody who's trying to change their diet. Yeah. To, the to first advice I give anybody is before you start trying to put things in your body, eliminate things that you're putting in. So the first step is detox, no matter what you're doing, no matter what dimension you're looking at is detox. So stop putting fast food, stop putting like this, these different poisons and things that are terrible, terrible for your, for your body. And now once you're at the step where you're going shopping and you're looking like, what can I eat? Cause that is a big step. Like I used to eat large frozen pizzas by myself, quad stackers. Like I used to eat whatever, like before I went on my whole spiritual journey, I would eat anything like large peak, man, I'm telling you it was wild. And I was still the same size, but <laughs> I was a machine. And once you start your healing journey of of like changing your diet, it's like, what do I eat? Like, that's a huge question. Like, what do I just eat? Like salads and and apples? Like, no, Um, lentils are great. Quinoa, farro. um, Of course, get your green, your leafy greens, kale, arugula. I don't know how to say it, man. Watercress is great. Um, Just eat more fresh fruits and veggies. And even like juicing it too and drinking them. Juicing is good as well, but you don't want to juice too much because sometimes your body doesn't. Um, it depends on your body. Like if you have gastritis, juicing is not good for you. Your body will not like that. Um, but sweet potatoes, purple potatoes. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of foods that you could still eat. Um, I will personally just recommend staying away from like these like fugazi like vegan patties, the Beyond Burger meat and stuff. Oh, like so that. the substitutes? Nah, oh. man, that's oh, garbage. Shit. Look Damn, at the ingredient okay. list, like. <laughs> Well, anything you're buying, like look at the ingredient list. If you, if there's like more That's than right. two things that you have no idea what it is, okay. like you probably shouldn't buy it. But look at the back of like Beyond Meat and burgers, and like you're gonna be like, what the hell am I eating? Like, okay. <laughs> it may taste good, it may be like, oh, but it's vegan. But like, just because it's vegan or just because it's organic, it does not mean it's good for you at all. <laughs> You really got to like start to educate yourself on like what's good for me just because it says it's not about just learning how to read labels, learning, learning what your body requires. I heard Daylight say that he was saying that um, even people who they even put like GMOs in in, like the vegan, some vegan foods. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. So it's it's vegan doesn't mean healthy. Vegan vegan is a lifestyle. It's actually not even just diet. Vegan veganism is a whole lifestyle. That's like anything that those people who are truly living the veganism lifestyle are not buying clothing that's made out of like animals or anything like anything that that's made out of animals. They don't do it, um, which is pretty extreme. I like more power to them. I don't True. live that lifestyle, but more power to them. But yeah, that's the whole veganism. But it doesn't mean that it's healthy. Like that's Oreos true. are vegan. Holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> that's wild. That's what I'm saying. Damn, <laughs> Oreos are vegan. Okay. Yeah, that blue 27 is not good for you. <laughs> blue 17, though, that might be good for you. <laughs> you serious? 
No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my favorite color, my number. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> 17's a dumb number. Um, oh, man. Yeah, so appreciate it. I'm definitely going to take notes because that's that's really where I've been stuck at. Like, my fridge is empty, but I just don't know what I want to fill it up with. And, and I'll get, like, vegetables and, and whatnot, and I won't cook them, and then they spoil, and then I throw them away. Yeah, um, a big step is, like, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't just go on a shopping spree and do all this healthy shopping because you're going to get home and you're going to look at it and it's going to overwhelm you. And you're going to be like, what the fuck do I do with all this stuff? You know what I mean? Start supplementing, slowly shifting your main, let your mind and your taste bud adjust. Like, okay, tonight I'm going to have quinoa, you know, buy only buy like quinoa or, or buy things that you can cook and that don't spoil right away, you know, um, or when you're going to buy your vegetables, buy vegetables that you're going to eat that day. Or maybe that, you know, I'm going to okay. dedicate and eat the, like my sweet potatoes today or tomorrow, you know, to start substituting slowly. And then, um, Eventually, you'll, you'll gain to light. You'll get more experience, and, and you'll slowly unlock it within your consciousness of like, wow, I could do this and this. Use spices, use herbs um, that are good for you, that are that have good health benefits. So and it's really a journey. It's really a journey. It truly is, and it's it's a beautiful journey. You know, you'll feel so much better. Your energy will be cleaner. You'll have more energy. Um, you won't rely on coffee and things that are really false energy and, and not really giving you energy, but putting you in, in fight or flight. True, and you'll become more conscious. Literally, just through your food, like food is, it's fuel for yourself. So like what kind of fuel, what kind of information are you putting? It's literally information. Just like, have you ever seen, well, yeah, like in the movie, The Matrix, like <laughs> there's literally like a whole code and in, in, in information in everything you eat and put into your body. So what kind of information are you asking your body to process? You don't put shitty fuel in a race car. It'll run funny. So if you want to be a race car, don't put shitty fuel in there. Cause you'll run funny. That's real. Um, so, I mean, you did mention before you used to eat, um, pretty unhealthy yourself. So that means you weren't always on the path you're on. No, no, no. I used to be just the average. Well, I was never average. That's, that's <laughs> not with the aqua <laughs> that's, that's like, I, I was badass, but like literally it was not, it was bad. That's about it. <laughs> like I was just an average dude, I guess, quote unquote. Um, I used to play semi pro football. I played sports my entire life. I was always like an all star athlete. I rode motorcycles like a fucking idiot, like hundred mile an hour on the freeway in Chicago. I was wild. Um, and yeah, I just went to you know I'd go out. I wasn't heavy into alcohol, but I'd go out and party with my friends and just looking for a good time and just looking to like enjoy life, right? Because I knew knew better, know better. I had intuition to know there's more out there, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah, and then long story short, I got sick. I couldn't go to the bathroom for four days. Um, it was kind of a buildup. It didn't just happen. I, I felt it intuitively, like I was like, "Man, something's wrong with me." But I was avoiding it because nobody wants to like face that truth in their journey. It's like, uh, "Let me not go to the doctor." And yeah, I went to the doctor. I did acupuncture. I didn't go to a medical doctor because those guys, for the most part, are fucking idiots. No offense to anybody who's a medical doctor, but. You're just following a book that probably doesn't work unless you're doing your own real practice. But yeah, I went to a, a naturopath doctor. I did acupuncture. Um, I started meditating. I literally in one day changed my whole life. I pinned my matrix. Wow. Like, With that, so acupuncture was really effective. Oh, for sure. Three, wow. Within three. Well, I decided like the moment I walked in that my doctor told me like, okay, well, you got to stop eating like a jackass. <laughs> Cause I was told her, I was like, I'll smash large pizzas. Like I was eating whatever, like just what the average person would eat, bar food, burgers, pizza. Um, and so the moment I walked out of the office, I had already decided like, I'm, I was 22 or 23. I was like, I'm not going to let this ever happen again in my life. Like it was like a reality check for me, but I took it serious. Like what the fuck am I doing that at 22, I'm going to the doctor because like I can't go to the bathroom for four days. Like I was like, and I I always knew I was a badass. So I was like, I got more power than to like be in the situation again. So let's get our shit together. So that moment, literally, I started cooking for myself all organic, non-GMO. I already knew about this stuff. I just wasn't doing it because I didn't believe that eating healthy could lead to disease. Because I was young and you have to go through that experience. So I went through the experience of really realizing like, oh shit, like if you eat like shit, like bad shit, what happened to you? Like. <laughs> Plus emotions that are backed up and stuff like that. So I started meditating. I was already doing yoga for a couple of years. I changed my whole diet. I was cooking for myself. I did three acupuncture sessions and I was just fully decided that 
I was going to pimp my matrix that I was going to like change my life. And in two weeks, I was at the best vibrational state I've ever been in my life. Like I was booming for two days. I would work in two weeks. That's it. For two days, I would like go through two full days on four hours of sleep. No, no desire to sleep. Like I was workouts on both days. Like I was like, just had so much energy. And then that's when I became addicted to like, how much better can I feel? I did that in two weeks because wow. I'm fucking the savage. And I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to be in this situation. So now I saw what I could do. And I was like, holy fuck. Like, and I just started eliminating shit. And eventually like four months later or three months later, I was vegetarian. I just started realizing like having more consciousness on like what energy was. And like, I was like, all right, well, if I eat the shitty ass meat, then I'm putting that shitty ass fear and, and this terrible energy into my body. So if I want to feel better, which was like my dedication, like how can I fucking level up my life and my energy that I need, I should eliminate that. So literally one day I just had this download, like on a meditation, like, okay, I'm gonna go vegetarian. So I just went vegetarian. I was so detached to anything that was like slowing me down and so addicted to like, really just like fucking becoming a God, <laughs> like becoming like booming. I love how you, it wasn't cold turkey, like you built your way up to it. And one thing that I admire about you is you, you said that you always you always like to be like the best at what you do. Like even when you played sports, you're always like yeah. at least top three on what you're doing. For sure. But there's there's a lot of word magic in that too. I always, whenever I want to do something, I never I always try to word it in the right way. So I program my my mind in the right way. Your best subconscious mind's running my life, my running my show. So I always say I want to be the best at this because I don't know what the best. I don't want to limit it to like I want to be at this level. Yeah, I want to be the best level that I could be because I don't know what the best is. That's so real. So it's always subconsciously working towards being the best, whatever that may be. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Uh, once again, like your um, your awareness of intent is really incredible. So what what really got you into this path i mean you mentioned it but um more on the health side how did you how did you know that and just being in peru was mm. for you how did that because I, I remember the story you shared um coming to la that other time which was just phenomenal like um how how it, it turned out and, and how it worked so like i can imagine your your story yeah it was like yeah, it's like I could talk for like four hours about that, but I'll keep it brief. Um, the sickness was really what jump started me, like getting sick and, and experiencing the illness of my liver and my kidneys, like just shutting down um, and not being able to have normal body functions. Um, so that was really what like made me decide like, okay, well, I'm not going to be in this fucking situation again. Like, fuck this. Like, because I always... I was kind of a jackass when I was younger, not like in a, not like super like mean or anything, but like I always said like, well, you choose like how you want to live. Like I always had that in my consciousness. So I was like, well, I'm not choosing this again. So I, when I started my healing path within three months, I was doing ayahuasca in the States. I was, I was going to ceremony. I was literally addicted to anything that was going to jump my evolution, like, and just level me up. So eventually ayahuasca came through one of my channels, um, was presented to me and i didn't know much about aya other than like it's gonna help me mentally spiritually emotionally and physically and so i was like okay it's gonna help me out on that level like i'm in let's do it and ever since i did my first ayahuasca journey i knew i wanted to work with that medicine i knew that that was something like i had no idea like what shamanism was or anything so i didn't know what path to follow necessarily. I didn't have like, okay, well, you got to go to get the certification over here. It was more like, okay, well, I don't know what the hell this stuff is, but I was super connected to it and I want to know more. So by my, by my ninth ceremony, I was in Peru. A year later, I was in Peru. I was doing, um, I was on a retreat because ultimately when you do Aya, you eventually want to make it to the jungle and do it in her homeland and, and go through that whole experience and experience the shamans over there who are like the real masters. And I had a whole rebirth. I went on a three week retreat. I had a whole rebirth. Um, my teacher and I like developed this bond like that she she'd never experienced before either, where it was like a mother mother son bond. And she like gave me I just found this out like a couple months ago. She actually gave me part of her energy, part of her heart, like the first time she met me. 
because like that's what the plant spirits told her to do like and she was like she, never in her right mind would she would she do that to somebody she just met um but we just had that bond right away and she told me like you're super connected to the plants and i was just like well what can i do to learn like what i was open and she's like well you could say we'll teach you you know we'll give you your whole initiation go through your whole you know teach you about the plant <laughs> and so i came back because i had to be the best man in my friend's wedding a day after um so i came back was the best man did my duties there and then three weeks later, I was in the jungle again for three months, going through the whole process. And, and the initiation isn't like, okay, let's sit down and and have a class and here's your certification. It's you have to process your own shit. You have to go through your stuff through doing ceremonies. I mean, we're doing ceremony every other day, ayahuasca ceremony. And then we're doing what's known as plant dietas, which is um, builds basically a means of, of creating a bond with a plant spirit or a teacher. They're known as master teacher plants. And these are like high level conscious beings. They have spirits as well. And they're the ones that teach you, they help you heal on a deeper level. They expand your consciousness. Um, and then you also like have the energy. So earlier I was speaking of like the energy within me, the plant spirits, those are energies that I carry. So I have plant allies that are literally inside of me that I have to be conscious of, of my life too. And the rules that they have and, and take oh, because them. you're living with for and with them too yeah they're there i have like an a, like just like you have an emotional body i have like an energy body of those plants within me and i have to create the best home for them as well okay I, the more right. the more i dedicate myself to my path the more gifts if you will and powers and and the stronger my channel is through them and they're the ones that work through me in ceremony they're the ones that that do the healing i don't do anything i just clean my bustle do my job do my sacrifices you know do my diets and build a relationship meditate with them and allow them to do the work through me that's amazing and um, so that's what kind of got me here here we are <laughs> it was i was going to the, to peru and eventually and just having a whole rebirth you know having that realization and clarity and what year was that man that was 2017 Oh, nice. when I made it down there. Yeah. And that's awesome. Oh, uh, man. It was just so much family stuff that I processed, so much stuff. And I was just willing. Like, I was just whatever, whatever, so open to do whatever they told me. Like, it was wild. I was doing all types of different plant medicine. I'm telling you, I have to do the one where you have to puke and <laughs> shit for four hours. And that's, like, that's not calm. That's even more intense than combo. Oh, yeah. yeah. The combo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Combo, combo ain't shit compared to that. Like, <laughs> And combo is ridiculous. Combo is cool, but I don't work with combo. But that's um, wild. Yeah, no, these plant medicines are way stronger than combo. Damn. Um, but, oh my god. Yeah, there's some wild ones. Wow. Um. So I mean, yeah. What's the you answered this question, but like, what's the difference for someone who isn't aware and and wanting to know what's the difference between going to a ceremony here versus in a homeland? Oh man, it was an analogy of it. So you, you don't get robbed, like depending who you're working with here, obviously, um, assuming the person you work with has integrity, has been taught the right way and is holding that space in a traditional manner. Um, you can still have extremely deep experience in the States. Um, I, I did. I had, you know, very deep experiences when I was um, doing ceremonies here um, as a student, you know, as just an average person learning. But when you're working in Peru, man, one you don't have the energy i call it like the energy bog that's here like here we're like even if you're just chilling wherever you're chilling there's wi-fi there's radio signals there's all this bullshit going through your energy body and like dumbing down your your energy so you don't have that you're in the middle of the amazon jungle the amazon jungle is known as the lungs of the universe 80 percent of the world's air gets clean there so like you have more oxygen in your body all the food tastes more there's more life in your life if you will um so you have the advantage of the jungle and just that healing environment i mean just the jungle without ayahuasca is like amazing it's healing itself now you throw plant medicine and now you're working with person if you come to my center you're working with my teacher who is extremely well known and, and man she is a force super powerful i love her shout out to her and her family um but those are the masters man she's been doing that you know for her whole life since she was 12. do you know her when her birthday is it's seven days before mine. I have the same birthday as my male teacher, January 17th. He has the same birthday as me. We're all Capricorn. <laughs> We're all Capricorns, man. <laughs> and she the laughs. goat's the greatest of all time. Yeah. Damn. She, she, <laughs> 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 she laughs because we laugh about it. She says you know, we're horns so that we can bash each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're all caps though for That's sure. <laughs> that makes more sense now why she was able to give you a portion of her spirit because it's like 
you almost said it. was wild, man. Yeah. She just told me that. I was like, why did you tell me this? Like, she's like, I don't know. Like, wow. it just came when it came. I was like, man, I was just so grateful. Like, fuck. I mean, there's a lot of power in the workshops y'all do. Like, you you bring people together. You help them release a whole lot of stuff. You you help them break through onto their path. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, Ultimately, it's, like I tell everybody, I don't do anything. All I do is create the safe space for you to do your work. That's it. Now, I assist. I guide you through the journey. I sing. I, I do everything I can in my power. But at the end of the day, I'm just creating the space and environment for you to do your sacred work, for you to air out your laundry, for you to really feel safe enough subconsciously to like let go of those things maybe cry you know whatever it is to really dig deep into that subconscious mind and and release those things that are little tensions that, yeah that right now you don't see and you don't feel but like when you really sit down and think about it like man there is some shit that's going on with me and you so you definitely recommend that if someone can they go to peru to oh for sure peru. if you are looking for a sign this is it but if you're looking to literally the only thing I can promise you when you come to Peru is a full on transformation. Like it's one of the most powerful transformations you could do in your life. Going out there for two weeks, doing plant medicine. And we don't just do ayahuasca. We do whatever you need, whether that's blood medicine to clean your blood system, to clean your nervous system, to, to if you have constipation, if you have memory loss, whatever it is, you get that medicine you get that whole healing experience but people don't come back the same man like that's the only thing i promise is you will not come back the same and then i specifically at my center i work with you for preparation it's super important for he doesn't prep. play with prep he doesn't yeah. play with prep no nah, like you ain't come I, i'll choose people to come like i have to interview and make sure you're at the right space and i can work with you for you to even come down because it's going to be a powerful experience and if you're not ready for that i can't allow you in my circle I can't allow that for the integrity of, of everybody there. That's true. Um, but the preparation, the integration are just as important, if not more important than the experience itself. Because if you're not going to come back and integrate it, if you're just going to go have like an experience or have a trip mm -hmm. and not treat it like a sacred medicine, uh -huh. then you come back and do the same shit. What's the point of going? It's point. just a memory. It's just like, wow, that was fun. Wow, I had a trip. Instead of like a launch point. And that's another thing I respect about you. Like, it's, it's not about the money to you. Like, you're not like, oh, you have to pay this or you're not going to come. Like, yeah. you're definitely willing to work with people and um, hold space for them. Yeah, I mean, there's energy exchanges because there's cost to running, you know, on an energetic level. I just don't see money the same as most people. I don't see it like, like money, right? I see it as energy. And there has to be energy exchange if you want us to have we good there. Like as much as you have to be on an ayahuasca diet, like we eat very well, like very healthy. Um, there's literally a security guard running around. The, we're in the middle of the jungle. He's taking care of the grounds. There's people there that have jobs that we give jobs to, which is beautiful because these people wouldn't have a job without it. They'd just be jobless hanging out in the jungle, um, living their life. And so there's cost to doing all that. And, and obviously I also – invest in you're also not just supporting the center you're supporting my mission to go around the world and share this medicine so that we can ultimately free the most amount of minds that are working within this messed up matrix and they can create their own matrix and, and be freed from that um but yeah we always work with people any one way or another like if you're meant to go you're meant to go and and anything that i could do in your favor like i'm more than willing that's my that's my service it's my job to do that that's beautiful <clears throat> well let's let's play the um the three questions game. We'll just take turns asking each other questions to be about anything. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. That's right. Uh, you go first. You want me to go first? All right. For sure. So if you didn't go on your if you if you never had any um if you didn't go through what you went through basically, or maybe you did, but you never walked the path you're on now, where were you headed? Where do you think you were headed? Oh where man. You that's a good question. <laughs> Well, I might still be playing semi-pro football because that was like a form of my anger. Like, I was mm. deck people, man. <laughs> I was a savage. <laughs> Little dude, but I messed people up. Mm. Um, so I'd probably still be looking for ways to let go of my anger that I had pent up. And uh, I'd probably just be working for money. Like, I was always good finance. I was always in sales. I used to sell cars and making six mm. figures at 22, um, which was nice. cool. But it was literally like a mini Wolf of Wall Street where I was getting high all day. I was literally high from the moment I woke up to like the end of the day. I was high as shit, slanging cars and dealership. Like yeah, marijuana high. Not like, yeah, do you, no, nothing do you crazy. Do you smoke weed like that? Anymore? No. Oh, 
I don't do anything other than drink ayahuasca, and other um, plant medicines from the jungle. But the, my plant medicine, my plant and allies don't allow me to do anything. I was gonna say like the, I hate to interrupt you, but like the the high from marijuana is it even more toxic now, or is it just like no? If I smoke, I'll still get high, but it'll mess up. It'll basically piss off the energy that I have inside of me, mm -hmm. the plant, the different plant allies that I have, and now. The same way that those energies, that those spirits can heal me and teach me, they can fucking kill me. So, like, if I do mm. something, if I don't obey, obey the rules, like, they can legit, like, kill me. Now, I would have to do some messed up stuff, but they can get me sick. They can get me confused. They can, they could, I could have bad luck if I don't abide by the rules that I agree to. I, I formed a contract with these plant yeah, spirits. Okay. So, I have a contract. Like, there's certain things that I can't do. Like, I can never eat pork, which I don't do anyway. Um, I can't, like go out and be like negative to all these people or like i have to live my life in a certain way in a certain vibration um and if i go against that then i could get bad luck i could get sick and ultimately i could die if i'm really like going out there doing some crazy stuff i, I love that that makes so much sense like once again it's it's really a, a more spiritual form of accountability yeah it's so it's not? literally a sacrifice it's a beautiful sacrifice like yeah. i i don't have a problem with it but you have to live your, your, it's a life path. That's why I always say there's no part-time shamans. Hmm, that's there's really no real. such thing that's as a part-time shaman. Like that's you're real. either doing it or you're not. Yeah. Like don't play yourself. That's what's up. That's really what's up. So did I answer the question? No, not yet. What was the question? No, you can ask any question. No, what was it? Oh, did I answer your did question? You answer, um, oh, what would yeah, I be doing? Did, did, oh, so oh, yeah. So I'd probably be, be some forming a way to make a lot of money. Yeah, you and said you'd probably be working. Gotcha. I'd probably just be finding a way to make a lot of money. Starting my business, I wasn't stupid. Like, I was very business oriented, playing football and just, I don't know. I don't really see it any other way. I can't even tell, answer that question, like, honestly, because yeah, it's not I was like answer. always looking like we're like, I was looking out of what I was doing. I just didn't have the answer until it came. It looked like form. you were destined to do it, so like, would yeah. be another. I couldn't even like imagine, like, nah, man, I would have figured something out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like, I was like, but. Wait. Yeah. Let's see. What can I ask Mike? What was your biggest entrance into astrology and what made you like, bam, this is it? Um, little did I know the, um, the cosmos. I, always, I truly believe like the universe kind of set me up because I came from such rigid beliefs that closed me off to it. Mm. So stuff going all, all around in my life at the time, kind of, whereas before I would have a mental trap to be closed off. Um, it was like 2010, 2011, I got this like DUI case uh, where I wasn't even driving drunk and uh, the police officer lied on the police report. Thankfully, that trial got thrown out. I never got a charge because we were able to uh, squash it. But I was like, yo, like if I die, am I going to go like I'm probably going to go to hell? Like I say, I worship Jesus, but mm -hmm. do I act like am I, do I really live this life? You know what I mean? So I wanted to go hard for Jesus. Um, <clears throat> really, I really took my Christian faith like pretty seriously for that year. And I was researching the Bible only to realize, wait, this isn't really as inerrant as I thought. And so little, little by little, whereas I would never watch horoscopes, that started to come up. I started watching horoscopes, getting a little bit interested in astrology. And then there was this um, Baba Lao who was into like Santeria, Ifa, who kind of like, I met through my younger sister because his, his uh, stepdaughter, was uh, going to school with her. So she, mm. she, she would take her home and then she got introduced to this. So she was like, hey, if you want to try something, I can introduce you to some dude. And he kind of like was, he he kind of served the purpose of getting me ready for it because he wasn't into astrology. He felt like it was bullshit. Like you, you guys rely on transits. Like I can just, you know, talk to the Orisha and we can make stuff happen now. But uh, it was around that time where he was kind of like helping me transition my faith system and see what was out there. He introduced me to tarot. And um, it was around that time I got, I, I was in this community called Soul Garden and I actually got a reading. So to answer your question, when I actually got a natal chart reading and somebody mm. like completely looked into it and, and really, um, 
you know, I ended up finding out that dude who introduced me to tarot and uh, was into that. He just wasn't really the right energy. Like, it, and it reminds me of what you were talking about mm. before. Like, it was really black magic. -y. My yeah. first teacher did black magic. You know, sometimes your way in isn't the most lightful, but yeah, it was deaf. I needed it though. You know? it was, I yeah, so did I. Like, I needed. I learned so much of what not to do from yeah. like my first teacher. I learned a lot about energy, and I also learned a lot about what to not do. <laughs> That's so real. Yeah. It's like they say, seeds grow in darkness, but bloom in the light. Ooh. I just posted it on my Instagram. Ooh, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, after that reading, that just was like, wow. Because I've, I've always been passionate about understanding personality. So Myers-Briggs was my shit. I was like, are you introverted, extroverted? And then this one was just like, oh, wow, this is it. And then I immediately started like digging and learning and, you know, created a YouTube channel. Um, and rest is a bit of history, but here we are. Yeah, here we are. I want to answer a quick question. Somebody asked why I don't eat pork. So this is my opinion, my experience. You don't have to believe this, but I'm going to share it because you asked. So eating pork is like eating a human child. Let me explain. On the physical side, it's pigs don't sweat. Their skin is like leather. Like it doesn't sweat. It doesn't, well, leather sweats, but Pigs don't sweat. So all the shit they eat and they literally eat anything, <laughs> literally eat shit, is in their body. And like it doesn't just fucking disappear. Like when you eat that pork chop, when you eat that bacon, like you're eating accumulation of everything that made that, which was everything the pig ate. On, an, on the more energetic side, pigs are fucking smart. They're smarter than dogs. Like you could train a pig like a dog. Like they're super fucking smart. Oh, shit. And if you ever listen to a, a pig like squeal, and like they go through human emotions like super close like human does so eating a pig not like a dog though even no like a like That's a pig wild. pigs are on another level like literally they're going through emotions like we do like a three-year-old child so if you eat a pig it's like the energy of eating a three-year-old child That's wow. it's pretty fucked up and i may have ruined pork for you and if i did good <laughs> it's not good for yeah. you um to but, even support, yeah, there's that too. Someone else was saying they don't. My my Lyft driver yesterday was saying they don't eat pork just because um, it's just dirty ass meat, man. Yeah, I love pigs. Pigs are cool, but like, don't eat it. Um, I never <laughs> heard that though. That it's like eating a child. That's a really I, I, flawless. You got to bring a good point. I don't know shit, man. Live your life. What do I know? <laughs> like I always say, I don't know nothing, man. <laughs> But I mean, that's that's good to know. Like, I'm not gonna look at pork the same <laughs> anymore. Yeah, pork, man. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. I used to love my bacon. Yeah, <laughs> turkey wrap bacon, like bacon cheeseburgers, man. Like, you did not like bacon more than I did back in the day. I promise. But like, I learned some shit, yeah. <laughs> and my that's body's that's a lot that. happier without the bacon. <laughs> that's what's up. No, that's what's really up. Um, Every anytime I see bacon, I'm just see a kid on the bacon, like ah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> my second question for you is um, sexuality. Like, how do you? What is your views on? This is it's a bit of multiple questions, but what are your views on like sex and then more like tantra and like um, connecting sexually with a woman mm. and vice versa? That's a super good question. Yeah. So, um. And in the, in the sense of like incorporating what you do and your spirituality with yeah. yeah. So what shamans do when it comes to sex is one, it's it's literally a sacrifice. So when we're doing dietas, when we're when and we're in isolation, we're going through fasting, we're going through celibacy in the jungle, like building a, a relationship with the plant spirit. We can't have sex. Yeah. So um, and it depends, obviously, tradition to tradition, but traditionally in, with the people, you can't have sex. So if you're doing a year long dieta, you can't have sex with your wife for a year. And she has to understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but also that's wow. just kind of like on that level. That's real. But overall, in general, since I carry different energies, like the different plant spirits, like not to say like I'm the shit or anything, like anybody could do that. Anybody could have that. But like I have to be careful who I share that with because like I got some important, like some potent information coming through me. Like, cause like I always say like, the human penis is a USB drive, and the vagina is the flash drive that, that the USB port. So, like when you have sex, you're connecting the USB with the USB port, and there's a lot of information and energy that is getting in and out. So, like I always say, if you don't want to be somebody, 
don't have sex with them. I'm always looking at everything as a form of energy, of course, because energy is truth. Be somebody, gotcha. Yeah. Man. So like, if this person doesn't hold a certain vibration, it's vibrations, frequency. Like, if I have sex with them, my frequency is gonna lower. You know. Yeah. And at the, at the same time, it's it's looking at the the your your perception of sex. Is it just is it an objective form like the way they perverted it and the way the way they want you to think it you know where it's just like objective and it's aggressive and you're smacking ass and like it's just like an object in front of you, or is it this an opportunity for you to bond and form a union with somebody else's spirit so that you guys could serve each other and this world better, so that you guys can can seek enlightenment together through that sex because you can go to many different worlds with the person once you learn how to really work your sex magic. Sex is powerful. You can manifest beautiful things. So me personally, it's it's not about just going and having sex with anybody. Like I used to be a savage when I was younger and just fucking do whatever the fuck I wanted. Just like any teenage boy, right? Just go and have fun and whatever. Be a bunny like, <laughs> like bunnies, right? But like why, as I went through my healing journey, aside from being restricted from the sacrifices that I have to make from the plants and to walk the path that I do, I also looked at it in an energetic level of like, well, I don't even want to mix energy with this person. Like, I don't care how good you look like. I've dated some beautiful women, beautiful women, models, and that doesn't do it for me. It's not like you could literally be beautiful, whether it's fake or, or natural beauty. But if you don't have a mind, if you don't have like a certain energy within your consciousness, like if you still have lots of fear, if you still have lots of like these lower frequencies, I don't care what you look like. Like, it doesn't mean shit to me. Like, I appreciate your beauty and it's good to look at. It's fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but energetically, like, it just doesn't match with me. I don't want to, I don't want to get in touch with that. And then it be through me that I'm going to start manifesting more fears and be like, why is this happening to me? Like, obviously I just had somebody sex with somebody who like was super fearful. So now I'm like having like this, like not wanting to jump energy and that's not me, you know? So it's just being conscious of who you sleep with, regardless of what path you're on. Um, just being cautious, you know, cautious. It's it's not, um, it's not, it's beyond the physical energy gets transferred and you don't want to share energy with somebody who's not doing work. I promise <laughs> somebody's not practicing energetic cleansing of some sorts. I would not sleep with them. And it makes, it makes perfect sense. And it tests your temptation and your yeah. return and all that. Yeah. And then also like just abstaining, like semen retention and, and really, um, just being abstinence from sex and, and channeling that sexual energy in a different form and changing your perception and view from it, like really makes sex more beautiful when you do choose to have sex with somebody you love or somebody yeah. you're sharing that space with, because if you're just so dumping true. out all your energy and pounding, and pounding away, like <clears throat> you're, you're depleting your energy because semen requires so much life force to make so much chi. So when you're constantly dumping, even masturbation, when you're constantly dumping your semen, you're low energy. You're not going to be energized. And your manifestation powers are going to suck. They're going to be weak as hell. And semen retention isn't as simple as just not masturbating, right? It's you have to actually channel that Yeah, energy. channel that energy. Exactly. Right. But, I mean, as not masturbating, not masturbating as well, but also channeling. Like, also the combination channel. of both. But if you want to manifest things, if you want to have that, like, flair, that, like, energy, like, where every, when you just come in a room and you're booming, like, no matter Ooh. who's in there and, like, they yeah. feel you, right? That's having your sexual energy intact. That's, that's having means. that like, that like that fire in you still there, so you can man, you could anything you want. It could come to you like that. Okay. But if you drain your sexual energy, your creative energy, your manifesting energy, you're gonna have a tough time. <laughs> so it's just like um, smoking weed, drinking alcohol. It depends what you put in your body. That's what's gonna like exactly. So okay, so you're not you're not really in. At no time did you ever say don't smoke, don't drink. You just want people to be more conscious of what. Yeah, I always tell people live their life. Do. I don't know shit, man. <laughs> For sure, I could share if you ask me a question. I'll share some some wisdom that I've gained through experience or through plant spirits or through ceremonies. But at the end of the day, what do I know? I don't know nothing. He's like he's Aquarius Moon. He knows <laughs> he knows a lot. <laughs> I don't know shit. <laughs> uh, somebody asked about alcohol. I'm just gonna share something quick on alcohol. Um, if you pay attention to the energy of alcohol and also the etymology, if you ever, if you know what etymology is, you could look it up. Etymology of alcohol. Look it up on YouTube, actually, after. Um, the alcohol, what it does is extract. When it's used in, in the medical form, when it's used in, in hospitals and things or anything, it's used to clean, to extract bacteria, to extract anything. 
So what does it do to you when you drink it extracts your soul? That's why people black out. What literally happens when people that are super uh, drunk yeah. and they black out, their soul leaves, leaves their body, and they're being controlled by a different. There's literally like black clouds over people, and they're like I said, being controlled like a puppet because their soul couldn't take the shit that they're going through anymore. That some another spirit came in and now it's controlling, and that's why they don't remember nothing. It's called spirits. <laughs> that's why it's called spirits. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's there's a lot of don't black magic in there. That you want exactly. That's why. It's it's deep. I'm wow. telling you. So I'm not saying you can't drink alcohol. I personally don't drink. I mean, I will have a glass of wine if I'd like. Or for my birthday, I had a, a drink. I haven't, you know, because I was with my teachers and and they drink in the jungle. <laughs> surprisingly, <laughs> they like to party as much as they like to heal. It's kind of wild. Um, they don't do it every day or anything. But yeah. when it's time to party, it's somebody's birthday, they will. But um, but I just don't overdo it. I just don't go crazy. I don't like. I I do it. If I do do it, like I really don't. But if I do, it's it's just with intention to relax, have a drink or two, and and that's it. Versus like really just ha having it be something that's regularity in my consciousness wait that's really what's good that's what's up. oh it's my turn yeah, yeah um round two damn where do you see i've seen your shift like since i like met you in person in december like i've seen your shift in your energy like really i'm just a fan of the person that mike's becoming wow like you're like that. really like doing it like you're just like fuck like i'm dropping some information on you that's against a lot of your beliefs and you're just like fuck like i see that and you're really starting to change your energy so like where do you see where's your biggest goals where's the biggest part where you feel not necessarily that you need help, but that you really want to overcome in the next whatever year, two years, whatever your your next immediate like big overcome that you want to really level up inside of your yourself, your life. That's a great question. Um, I will say in my chart, Capricorn is like my eighth house and my ninth house of like transformation and philosophy. So, um, is you definitely been a really great influence towards really taking it seriously and like mm -hmm. the action steps to do it, but. I would say it's something that I've been really want, working on, not working on, that I would say I've been working on it, but I've been wanting to work on it. It isn't until recently, you know, working with you and, and working with uh, people like Justin, too, that have kind of you know, encouraged me and, and challenged me. So really, it's, I want to go back to basics, like waking up early and mm. really waking up with purpose and energy to like yes. love what I'm doing, eating healthy. And um, I feel like just getting those basics straight will just amplify everything I'm already doing and thousand percent. do it way better. And uh, just commit to loving my body. And um, I guess to, to really answer that, though, I, I really want to master my diet, master my um, really kind of eliminate bad habits that I've been doing. But I really think it's all surrounded around eating, uh, eating and, uh, you know, staying, doing more and staying a bit less offline, online mm. and being more out Absolutely. under the sun. I appreciate that. And like I tell, that brings me to the point is like, I always tell everybody, whether it's food, whether it's the computer, your phone, whatever, your relationship with everything is everything. Whether that's with somebody, whether that's with somebody, if you can't drop something, like when I prep people for to do a ceremony, ayahuasca ceremony, you have to do two weeks of no masturbation, no sex, no smoking weed, no, no, basically nothing like fun, quote unquote. Um, and sometimes people have a problem like, well, I can't smoke weed for two weeks. I was like, well, you should look at that relationship. Because if there's anything, anything that you, that's an addiction, you know what I mean? It's a, it may, may be a mild addiction, but like anything that you can't let go of or, you know, just, just look at the relationships that you have with yourself. It also is with the relationship with yourself because the way you start treating yourself, like waking up, eating healthy and treating yourself with that energy, the more you're going to share that with others. Like for a big example I use, like when you walk into somebody's home, you will learn so much about that person. Do they offer you a cup of water when you walk in? Somebody who doesn't drink water will not offer you water. Mm, so they, it's not in their consciousness, yeah. right? Wow. Somebody who yeah. eats healthy, like whatever I do, like when you come to my world, this is David's world. 
you're you're in David's matrix. You're in my world. So like, I'll treat you how I treat myself, and I treat myself super well. So you will learn that your relationship will change naturally because now you're treating yourself with more respect, with more love, with more nurture. And you're going to naturally do that for everybody else because you know how it makes you feel good. And you just naturally start doing that. And it just starts changing all the relationships around you. Wow. I don't know why I just went into that. But that your relationship deep. with everything is everything. That was deep. Somebody asked something. I don't know. They there's It was blue. Let me just answer that question. I don't know how to do this. You do that. Something about autoimmune and allo, allopesh, which I've experienced both. So I could answer that question. I don't know. It's blue when they asked about alopecia, which is like when you have hair missing. They gave it like $2 or something. I don't, I don't know what that means or anything. There it is. Oh, Any man. wisdom on autoimmune disease and alopecia. Um, first, look at the energy of autoimmune. Um, autoimmune is assuming that it's your body's attacking itself. Look at the energy. Where in your life are you attacking yourself? Are you not supporting yourself? It's all energy. So um, that's true. That's just real quick on that. But your autoimmune, there's many, many different herbs. And I don't even know offhand because I literally have a box of herbs chilling in Maru's kitchen right now that I carry with me on the road <laughs> um, that I use for that. Um, ayahuasca helps with that plant medicine in the jungle. So if you ever want to go to in a, in a retreat, if that's available to you, I would highly recommend that. Um, but there's many different herbs and, um, teachers and stuff that you can take, but really look at your, um, your thyroid and your adrenals. Look at those, the health of those, look at your hormones. Why are you not producing the right things? You know, um, and good, there's many different good powders for those. I can, I'm drawing a blank. I can usually just name shit right off bat. Um, but as far as alopecia, like if you're if your hair is thinning, my hair is actually a little thinning. You can see, but that's because I'm actually growing it back. I was literally like I had like no hair like a year ago. Not that bad, but um, I'm treating my hair right now, and I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. Um, first off, you need zinc. You need um, there's a couple different vitamins and minerals that you can that you can look to. Biotin. Um, I'm drawing a blank again, but there's make sure you're getting your body the right nutrients. But before you even feed your body the right nutrients, detox your body. Everything's in your gut. So if your gut's not receiving nutrients, if your gut health sucks, then you're not going to receive nutrients through your gut. Um, so detox one, two. Um, if you're balding or, or you have issues up there, there's probably fungus growth in there as well. So black. This is literally like, write this down. This is what, what's going to help you, I promise. Your hair is going to grow wild. Black castor oil, black seed castor oil. Um, it's Jamaican, but make sure it's the black one, not just not this castor oil, the black castor oil. Um, and coconut oil, you're going to do um, bioorganic, obviously, everything. You're going to mix the black castor oil with the, a little bit of coconut oil. Rub your hair all over it, wrap your hair in a towel, and leave it overnight. And then you're going to wash it in the morning with water and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. So you got to kind of put it like in a bucket and really massage it into your scalp and, and wake up the cells again. Um, but depending where your alopecia is, like me, when I started my journey, that's actually how I found out that before I couldn't go to the bathroom for four years, I had alopecia. I started off as a little dime, like right here which is was one of my kidney points so i knew it was my kidney already oh shit! yeah because your head every single point tells you something every every part of your head tells you a certain so mine wasn't my kidney point um my kidney meridian and it started like a little diamond eventually it was literally like this big now i used to get a fade all the time and it was short buzzed so it didn't you couldn't really tell as long as i got my hair cut gotcha. but i was hiding before i six months later i finally went to the doctor because i could go to the bathroom cool. uh, but that's how my journey started with it and <clears throat> through chinese medicine um, I went to see acupuncture. I grew my hair back, like naturally, and then just diet health. That's beautiful. Oh, I shit. hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, and and it looks like you and Maru kind of spoke more in depth about. Yeah, like, we Aya and we whatnot. dropped some super good secrets on our uh, our our live we did yesterday. She was asking me about all my sauce. I dropped some good sauce uh, yesterday. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
my last question for you is, um, you know, people kind of, especially with Hollywood imaging and, and shows, they kind of exaggerate what a superpower is. Um, what what would you say when, you know, I, I think more simple things in our lives could be superpower. I think of someone's kindness could be their superpower, you know what I mean? So what are, what are two superpowers you have? Like if you Ooh. could trademark them and it was like your own power. Yo, I'm gonna not say that I have them. Well, I do have them, but they're also a work you of progress. I, okay. I, I am them. Word. One of the most strongest superpowers that you can have is doing whatever the fuck you want. Oh, that's true. People think you think you do whatever the fuck you want. I promise you, you don't. Your programs tell you what you to do, and you that's think you true. wanted to eat that cupcake, but really, deep down inside, you didn't want that cupcake. You wanted to be healthier. You wanted to look better physically. You wanted to be healthier and feel good. That's right. But you said, "Oh no, I wanted to do that." No, you didn't. That was your program. That was your emotion. So literally being able to do whatever the fuck you want, like on a super conscious level, yeah, that's what I'm about. That's real. Like when you really look at yourself as a character and like, what can I do to pimp this dude out? What's in my highest and best interest? Truly, it's not smoking that blunt. It's not smoking that tobacco. It's not doing this, you know. Because you're chasing the feeling. Yeah, you're chasing that's the true. feeling. You're, tra- yeah. you're chasing this. And I'm not saying you can't do those things. Live your life, but. What is it that's in my? It might be a magical fucking cupcake. You're right, <laughs> but uh, what what is it that I can? I'm all about leveling up. So doing whatever the fuck I want, that's gonna level me up. It's a fucking superpower to me, and I'm pretty good at it. But I'm still working through it. You know, I'm still still going through it. But you got it. It's something you I got it. Do. Yeah, for sure. Like doing whatever the fuck I want. Like being basically being mindless, which brings up my next superpower is being a mind engine, understanding the power of the mind. Like this is this strongest computer in the world and once you learn how to work this this is why like my biggest affinities in this lifetime are energy just overall energy emotional energy emotions and what's emotions energy and motion just understanding energy in general and then the mind being a psychonaut being being a mind hacker and really understanding that this is creating everything so like i have to be careful what i think because that shit happens like good or bad like it's mm. like that. Mm, that's so like, real. so like cleaning your mind out and understanding the way that works, the way the connections are made, and, and and really understanding that this is here to serve you, and you're not here to serve it, and becoming the owner and the friend of your your ego and your mind, and like working together with your mind to create whatever the fuck you want, which ties into the superpower of doing whatever you want. That's my superpowers. That's what I'm about. That's what's up. Shout out to Hangmaster uh, in the building. So dope, man. That's really what's up. That's really what's good. Oh, um, yeah, no, we got one more question. I got a question for you. Um, who? It's a good one. Oh, it's shit. coming through. Hold on. <laughs> roll. What would you say is Oh, this is the question you asked. Oh, shit. <laughs> so what was the thing you're best at? Like, you got this shit. But hold on. I don't want to ask the same question. We're going to keep it interested. interesting. Uh, do you see yourself? What do you see yourself like, dude? Do you see yourself staying in Vegas? Do you see yourself traveling? Do you see yourself like, what's your kind of, your, your necessary goals, but your vision on that? Like, Great question. Really great question. Because I've, I've, I've recently been, uh, I recently got a, an initial idea. Um, I'm finishing, I have four semesters of school left, and then I plan to move out to like Long Beach or Costa Mesa, so I could be closer oh, nice. to Huntington Beach and- uh, Beautiful over there. Work a lot more, yeah, really dope. Work a lot more, I was there this last weekend, work a lot more closely with uh, people like David, people like you, mm-hmm. the Leo King Matter, people like you, um, really just network more. What I really want is ultimately to have a space there, have a space like in the Midwest, Texas, New York, and then I'll just be traveling. Bro, that's why we're friends. That's why I'm I'm literally creating, (laughs) like, and then making tribes all over the world. That's my goal is to, like, really work with people all over the fucking world. And, like, people who have their tribes already or, like, because I can't just go and build the fucking, it takes time to build the tribe, a core group of people in in places. Like, I'll just show up. Wherever I show up, like, shit will happen, I promise you. But, like, when somebody already has, like, a core group, a a tribe, or, or, like, a a group of friends, like, I want to go there and like pimp y'all matrixes and, and share what I do and like 
and learn from you guys. Cause like I got to tell everybody, I learn from everybody. Like I'm so grateful for everybody I meet. Cause I learned so much, even the people who are like the most humble or like just really don't quote unquote know anything. Right. They're like barely beginning their awakening. Like, nah, you know, some things and you're good at something. And I learned from you just observing you. So like my goal is to really connect everybody around the world and travel and, and be able to go anywhere and just have a homie to, homie's house to sleep at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and go do some work there and, you know, also enjoy it at the same time as, that I'm doing work. That's true. That's so true. I feel you on that. So maybe we're supposed to do that together. Yeah. I'm so wherever to... y'all at, y'all better start creating some networks over there. Cause we coming through and we, we, we waking it up this, uh, waking up earth. This, yep. We creating a, a, a wave. Transferring in the system. A ripple. Um, what does, is there people who have like a brain injury or mental illness is, is, Stuff like Aya and medicine not for them, or will it help them? That's a good question. So, Aya ayahuasca can really help people with addiction, people with PTSD, people with mild mental disorders. But it's dangerous. Like you have to go through an interview process first. It's not for everybody. Um, even people who really want to do it, and they're like, no, no. Like sometimes it's really not for you because. The way Aya works is she just amplifies and opens up your whole energy body and your whole subconscious mind. And there can be some trauma and some shit that comes through, you know, that's been suppressed deeply and can relieve you more damage. So that's why I always preparation, integration is super important. So I is not for everybody and make sure you go through um, the medical um, medical questionnaires um, with whoever you're working with and, and do your own research as well. Um, Unless you're working with somebody with integrity, then just, you know, go with them because um, there's all types of wild shit online. And unless sure. you know, like you don't know. Um, but yeah, so definitely like whoever you're working with, um, definitely answer their questions honestly. Like if you ever had any psycho problems, just because you had like or went through psychotherapy or, or had some issues or went were an addict for 10 years, like doesn't mean you're out of the picture. Like. Like it just, it's just something for the shaman to know so that they can be aware of what kind of energy they're going to be playing with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, whoever, whoever you're working with, like make sure you answer them correctly and, and do all that. Um, those who are asking that want to do ayahuasca, I have a healing center in Peru in the jungle. Um, you could hit me up on Instagram, energy is truth. Uh, or my website and find out more information. I was going to ask, like, that these are how people could reach you, right? If yeah, yeah. Know. I'm super reachable. You know, like, a YouTube, right? Just IG. I have, a, I have a YouTube, but oh, pe- apparently people can't find me. My YouTube is also Energy is Truth. And I'll post a video tomorrow because I haven't posted anything yet. Um, I unlocked it, like, a couple months ago. And I haven't decided to – well, I decided. I just haven't moved forward with posting video. So if anybody has a topic y'all want to hear – I'll make a video tomorrow. Just tell me what y'all want to what y'all want to hear. I'll make a video. Um, there's a lot of videos that are gonna come through my channel about plant medicine, about um, energy, about meditation, about like really just becoming lifestyle. Like, um, can things, people find as it as well website? as health? What was it? Can people find your channel on your website or your IG? Uh, on my IG, I think I have it on my link tree. Oh, sick, sick. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, um. Nice. But yeah, I'm super about, like I said, health and everything. I'm actually going to come up with it. Uh, I was actually started working on it with last night with Maru, a 21 day detox. And this isn't like the 21 day detox that you, you read online or like, that's all weak shit. Like when I say 21 day detox, I'm talking mind, body, spirit. I'm going to give you a workout to do for 21 days at home. You don't need anything. I'm going to give you, supply you with these herbs, these different powders and herbs. Some are from the Amazon. Some are just like iris, sea moss, burdock root, bladderwrack, oh, like shit. like the good shit, the Dr. Sebi stuff, the, the beyond Dr. Sebi stuff as well that has got me to the energetic level that I'm at um, as well as super, super foods that are going to help not only detox you, but revitalize you and rejuvenate you. Um, and so I'm in the process of coming up with it and also doing guided meditations because when you attack it, from the holistic view, like I'm saying, I'm always about looking at it in every dimension. Like I'm not a fan of addressing something on one level, address the emotion, address the physical manifestation, address the spiritual, like address the whole thing. That's how you're going to transform. Like, and it's 21 days. Like it's going to be fucking intense. Like if you're somebody who's like, Oh, well, this doesn't taste good. Like this is not for you. Cause I'm only accepting 11 people. And I'm going to interview these people and it's, it's really not for beginners. It's, I'm going to have a beginner entry level one 
coming soon. Uh, but for whatever reason, I was guided to do like the deep intense one for like people who are already at a certain level, but want to really level up to the next level. Like, yeah. um, that's what this is for. So I have more information on that. Um, you can hit me up on IG. That's probably the, the most responsive I'm at or on my website. Um, is there a story behind your tattoos or what inspired? <laughs> oh, this tattoo? Yeah. Um, yeah, I had no idea when I, oh, I guess I should show it. I had no idea. Like, I just had a vision when I was 17 that I was going to get this tattoo. Wow. And I didn't know, like, I, I had it designed. I told him exactly what I wanted. So I didn't know exactly what um what it meant until I kind of recently. I got to do an addition to it. Same. But um, what I have is, like, the stairway to heaven. There I have the cross symbolizing, like, Christ. Um, the white gate. This is just the sun, you know, kind of shades coming down. And the angel. Um, and then a dove kind of flying through clouds and stuff. So it was like two years ago, I realized like, I want to get like almost like a boy reading here or like meditating and their brain exploding into like stars and the cosmos. And then oh, like, that's nice. what gets you into heaven. That's what gets you to the higher dimensions. It's not just like, it's not just like, okay, I believe Jesus Christ is going to come save me. Like, nah, yeah. man, like, like that's cool. But like, Doing your work is what gets you to these higher dimensions. It's what connects you to what you're not disconnected from. So, yeah, that's going to happen sometime, I guess. That's awesome, man. That's really awesome. I guess in closing, do you have any final advice? I mean, you gave us so much advice, but do you have any, like, final words for people just getting in the spirit path? Man. Or even, like... It's not easy, man. It's not... Like, a lot of people think that... Oh, you're spiritual. You must not swear. You're spiritual. You must do this. Like when you decide to heal yourself, you're going to be attacked by everybody's demons because everybody's going to project their bullshit. Like literally you'll be surrounded by projections because all of a sudden you've changed and shit. So anybody who's going through their transformation or, or just starting like fuck everybody. Like for three years, I didn't talk to nobody. My brothers who I called my friends, like I still respected them. I said, I love them. I barely talked to my family. Like I was literally in my room doing my work meditating like researching doing all this work reading about energy reading about uh meditation about like what the fuck am i doing here on this earth and solitude is a powerful teacher powerful powerful teacher so if you're going through your transformation i recommend like start cutting cords start like really centering and finding out who the fuck you are like okay i have all these boxes that are inside my box like all these bubbles inside my bubbles let me push everything out and see what's really in my bubble because of me and like trust the process man i know you guys hear that all the time but like trust it like <laughs> if you if i always tell people if you ever fall in a big giant pile of shit you don't sit around and smell like oh man why am i in shit and complain like oh this stinks like you get the fuck out of there the fastest way is like where do i get out and you be line so like if you're going through it the fastest way is straight through get out of there you know focus on what you want to create not on where you're at Facts. That's beautiful. Well, I mean, y'all, y'all found out where you can hit David up. Make sure really reach out to him, man. Um, really reach out to him, y'all. You know, uh, shout out to the Billion Dollar Vibe Tribe for staying tuned. Shout out to Maru. Shout out to my major. Yeah. She makes the stuff mm -hmm. nice. I was excited to know these came in. Um, and yeah, appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, brother, man. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Word. Always a pleasure. That's what's up. Um, yeah, and, get, and until Yo, next time, shout out to Ducky. <laughs> Ducky, they don't even know that's Ducky. Oh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> they don't Ducky. even know. <laughs> they don't even know. We got Ducky in the motherfucking building. Damn. Yo, that was last night's Vines pickup. There's a full story on Ducky. That's going to require a whole other video, though. Damn. Oh, yeah. good to know. There's a whole story on Ducky and how he came into our pimped out Matrix life Word. last night. <laughs> Yo, hold on. I got a handstand check. Oh, Mike, you getting handstand check, too. Oh, oh yeah. no. Let me, let me go first before you uh, damage us. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> How you really gonna headstand check me? Really, Bella? Really? No. <laughs>
Damn. All right. The ground might rumble a bit. So. I don't think I've ever done one before. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Or a, a back or a, yeah, just a back foot, baby. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. Yo. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, hey, hey. Push, push. Tighten up that core. Oh, oh shit! That's a bit of it. Oh. I have no more handstands, man. I'm gonna yeah, teach yeah. my kind of handstand one of these days. I promise, uh, y'all. I promise. I remember you were talking about um, you put your your stomach to the wall. Yeah, core is life. That's the biggest advice. Yeah. No matter what workouts you do, no matter what aspect, meditation, whatever you're doing, your core is your life, and you're being able to encage your core is everything. <laughs> right. I'm so doing, bro. Oh, thank God it, it didn't hit the bad part, but I, I'm good. It's a, it's a wake up call. <laughs> Core is life. Definitely. All right, let's let these people fun, do whatever man. they got to do. I appreciate y'all. Y'all stay blessed. Thanks for <laughs> tuning in. I'm going to work on my hands. I was working on my Billy Rock. Now I'm going to work on my hands. Hey. Woo, peace out, y'all. <laughs>